All right, welcome everybody. This is uh, 271 Tech Speak, uh, a new podcast series that we're uh, developing. The whole idea behind this, the goal is to highlight some instructional practices that use uh, technology in the classroom that's going on uh, here in the Coeur d'Alene School District and hopefully to then share with each other and um, see more technology use across the district and, and hopefully spread some ideas on how we can all use technology uh, in our classrooms. Uh, with me today we've got Kelly Ogle from Hayden Meadows, a fourth grade teacher over here. A um, little bit about Kelly, she uh, Went to Arizona State, got her, uh, is that where you got your bachelor's degree? Okay. Um, and then once she uh, finished there, she taught um, a wide range of grades, went, uh, taught kindergarten, third, fourth grade, uh, right there in Tempe. And then um, she, they had a brand new computer lab down there and um, kind of started with PowerPoint and sort of started to fall in love with using technology in the classroom. Uh, with the good old PowerPoint. 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, and then she moved to Dallas and, and taught fourth grade over there. Um, and she's been out here at Hayden Meadows for five years now. Um, taught ALP, math, third grade, and fourth grade. Um, you can connect with Kelly uh, uh, on her Twitter. Her handle is at 117rocks. Uh, she also has a blog that's... Um, Techie teacher things That's kind of hard to <laughs> read off the page there. And then she also has a classroom website that you can take a look at. It's kellyogle.weebly.com. And at the end of the podcast, I'll post uh, links to all those um, so you can take a look at those. So um, thanks for being on here, yeah. Kelly, and, and joining us today. Um, our focus that we kind of talked about before we started the podcast was we're going to talk a little bit about how you use Google Classroom and you've got, you know, uh, all right. you've got a one-to-one -one iPad um, thing going on in here, which is right. really cool and, and using Google Classroom to help kind of manage that workflow. Right. So tell us how that works, how you got started with it, um, you know, kind of walk us through what that looks like. Well, we had one-on-one -on -one iPads as of last year. And I was using Google Docs a lot, but then this year, since August, late, I guess September, right. Google Classroom came and I signed up and just saw how easy it was. Um, as far as the management of my kids, of having 30 students this year, and being able to push out an assignment um, from nonfiction articles to videos, I mean, the gamut, you can show them all kinds of things, either they're reading, watching, taking notes, or turning in stuff. So I can even sit at home in my bed and look at what they've turned in and grade it and leave, do a quick comment to them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just the management of not dragging 30 papers home and having to right. grade them and hand them back out. It's, that stack you're sitting yeah. there and put on your <laughs> nightstand. Yeah. And, you know, they and it's have instant feedback off. for them right. too. I mean, right. sometimes in class I can, get to, I can get to it and easily give them a quick grade and push it back out to them so they can see kind of you know, how they're doing. Mm -hmm. We're doing a writing project, and I have it on Google Classroom right now, and they have to submit to me their beginning and their middle. So I can just easily, I'm quickly editing them and commenting mm -hmm. and pushing it back to them so they can kind of stay on track. Right, it's right. So, so far, so easy. Yeah. So far. <laughs> so far, yeah. <laughs> um, so what does that look like for, like, you know, when you're starting the assignment? Let's say you started it. Um, you know, how do you get the kids in there? How do you get them rolling using Google Classroom? So I signed up and then I got my kids. I actually made a different subject for all the ones that I knew I was going to be using Google Classroom for. Okay. And just for right now, science is what we're working hard on and integrating a ton of subjects into this using our science. Oh, okay. And so right now, I had the kids just put in the code for science and mm -hmm. they're instantly in there and waiting for them was an assignment so we're doing animal adaptations and so there was an article about you know a book actually there was a book that they got to read online about if I had teeth like this okay. so they all listened to it with their headsets and then directions are right there that I made for them on Google Classroom after you finish reading this book then 
you're going to go read this article. So they went to the next article mm -hmm. and they read that article and they actually had to make some notes for me. Okay. So they took some notes on what adaptations they were recognizing. Mm -hmm. And then I had them do research on what animal they could find that used teeth as an adaptation. Oh, okay. And so then they had to create themselves with their animal teeth on oh. Sketchbook Express. Okay. And they and had to have That's an some, app on the iPad? That's an app, okay. yep. And okay. I think it's free, actually, too. Nice. And it's pretty amazing, the stuff they can do. Yeah. Um, so they did that, and they put it in Book Creator, and then they made some facts about how that animal uses teeth as an adaptation. And then it's their face with their animal's teeth coming oh, out. Oh, nice. But then they turned it in through Google Classroom to Okay. Me. And so what's really cool is that I easily can see, because there's 30 kids signed up, so I easily can get on and see the 27 are done and three are not. And if you click on it, you know, it tells you which three are okay. still lagging and right. not finishing, which mm -hmm. to me is also the beauty of it because it keeps me holding the kids accountable. Right. Because there's always those three that kind of fall behind and mm -hmm. it's hard to like always keep on track of where right. everybody's at. Right. So it's just an easy, quick assessment too. Yeah. And was it hard to like then as, as the teacher pull those out of Google Classroom and view them to grade them or no. anything like that? No, you just click right on it. Okay. Up comes, you know, whatever that, it, you know, for this instance, it's that book creator piece. Mm -hmm. So I just can pull it up and look at it. Um, I just, I have an air printer in my room. And so I just even, actually the ones that, we you know, were okay. Then I just uh -huh. printed it straight oh, okay. off onto my okay. printer so we can make a book out of it. Oh, fun. Yeah. That's so cool. it's very easy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So can you give us a quick, and we're going to give this a try okay. using the, the Google Hangout here, and we're going to do a screen share. Okay. But maybe just run through us quickly uh, for us how you, let's see if it'll go. Oh, I guess I got to, there we go. Okay. All right. So run for us quickly how you, what it looks like, you know, as, as a teacher when you go in and, you know, let's say, give an assignment or if you've got an assignment kind of going, what that looks like and how you, you know. So if you'll click, click on the science. And scroll down. I always keep scrolling down like there's just, um, okay, so like right there. So just for instance, we've been doing adaptations. So the possibilities from using Google Classroom for me to actually find a video that is a great adaptation video and to be able to have all my kids have access to it instantly mm -hmm. is first of all amazing right and then they're reading and kind of watching this at their own pace okay you know so which oh, that's also a nice thing so i'm going to scroll down like right here here was a video that i found so that they had to watch this video and then this is the book that i told you about oh okay so then they clicked on and they listened to that book Okay. And sometimes I have kids leaving, you know, comments, comments to me. Right. Yeah, we do talk yeah. about trying to keep the comments educational and not, you right. know, yeah, right. keeping Having it kind of on task. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and then I actually yeah. formed a quiz right here um, from the article that I just showed you before. Okay. So I created it in Google Forms and put the link on right there. And so, as you can see, 29 kids took it and one has not. Okay. Instantly, I um, grade it and then that's an easy download into Excel spreadsheet right. and look at it. I have all can... my grades right there to, oh, yeah, nice. to put in. Um, so it just goes on and on. And here's another nonfiction article that they had to put into notability. It says and highlight in yellow five awesome powers. The Mantis has. Okay. And then after they're done, something that I could relate to it was a video that I found about the Mantis called the fastest punch. Okay. <laughs> so it's just to me like a really great way to have them read non nonfiction pieces. Mm hmm taking notes and then also seeing a video piece that goes with okay. it too. Keeping them, it's highly engaging for them. Okay. Yeah. No, good, good. Which is always helpful. Then. Yeah. Um, if you notice, I'm looking at the four done, 26 not done. So this is the thing we don't kind of focus right now because it's not an actual assignment. It's something they're doing right. in class. Okay. So some kids have already realized that they could go in and at least click the done button just and to just let me know that, that done, I've they done that. It. And uh -huh. I do want to get to that because it would be nice for kids to kind of follow through on that piece. Kind of track their own yep. progress through. But here is the type of um, the book that I was talking about. So this is the book right here. It, what if you had animal skin book? So 23 right now have turned it into me. Okay. So if you click on it, 
and I can easily, I'm going to go down to the one I know, and I click on that and her PDF that she attached to it, and then there is her book. Oh, okay. So this and this is, you, can, you can pop right up on almost any device to take a look at yep. as you're grading? Yep. Okay. So this, was, to me, is just kind of, you know, when I sit down and can see if she, you know, and I'll comment, like, you did not capitalize your title, and I'll look at her facts. But this was the part about talking about skin and hair for animals. Okay. And this is the Sketchbook Express app that she used to make. To put the skin over the top of her face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just super easy for me to take a look at. And then leave her a little comment. Right. Or even so instantly can, I could grade it too okay. after I'm done. Pop a little grade in there. Yep. And, yeah. And then send it right back to her and she'll instantly see her grade. Nice. Yeah. And then you've got the, you know, tracking of the ones who haven't done it. You can follow up. and That piece to me is really big because I always feel like as a teacher, it's really hard to maintain 30 students or more. Right. So to making make sure that they are all on track or at least finishing assignments. Mm -hmm. And this piece to me has been the biggest help for me. Yeah. To make sure who is not done yet and who right. needs maybe some extra help. Okay. Yeah. So an, even yeah, a way to um, kind of track the, oh, I don't know, some differentiation if it's needed. No, definitely. And when I read some papers, you know, you realize before it's actually a final product, when I'm reading what they're turning in as we're mm -hmm. going along, you know, I'm realizing who needs some major help right? and some one-on-one -on -one assistance and then who actually has got it and just can keep moving along. Is there anything else you'd like to show us there in classroom? Yeah, I'll show you, like, for my reading workshop, <clears throat> Um, the other thing is that we can do, like, I know a lot of um, people around the district are using Scholastic StoryWorks. Okay. It's been a really popular thing. So, um, I do save them as a PDF. Okay. And so this was for my uh, reading switch class and it was extreme sports. And so right now we're really talking about opinions and forming opinions and how do you form an opinion and write an opinion paper. Mm -hmm. So this was just a thing to kind of introduce them to. So I said, read this article using evidence from the text support both sides of the argument. So they had to read the article so they instantly can pull that up. And then they um, had like a little note taking that they had to do like okay. both sides. Okay. Let me see if I can pull this up and see if it even shows. <clears throat> So if they put this into Notability, which all my kids now know how to do, mm -hmm. right down here, then they use the evidence from the text they just read. Yes, the reasons why it was given, and no, the reasons why it shouldn't okay. be. So kind of tracking their reading as they're going mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. And then they turn that right back into me. Oh, nice. So and then, then I can, can take a look at it. Yep. Just, yep. So I can look at that. Um, and this is also another cool thing I did is that I always um, – change out books probably once every, I don't know, month, a month and a half. And so I do a book walk. Okay. But this time I picked four different books, and so I found trailers for each book. Oh, fun. And so I downloaded all the trailers, like Because of Mr. Trupped, Rules, um, Inside Out and Back Again, and Out of My Mind. So they all got to watch the trailers, and then I did a form on Google, and I wanted them to vote on their top choices and tell me why they picked that as their top choice. Oh, okay. So then I instantly just really quick scanned over it, could tell, you know, what book was really important to them and mm -hmm. why. And that's kind of helped me put them into groups as well. Okay. From, oh, nice. from interest. Yeah. Oh, okay. From their so interest. You, a really easy way to put them in interest groups and make it almost, I would say almost more true to their interests because it's, it's not like, oh, hey, I know. It's private. Yeah, it's yeah. private. Yeah. Instead of, you know, I want to go over there because that's where my buddy right. is. It's, you know, we're a group of people who actually are interested in reading this book. And I found that that told, last time I did that, I found that it's amazing what kids can do when they actually are interested in a book. Yeah. Even if they're a little bit maybe behind on reading or a little slow, but they want to be in that book. So they mm -hmm. really try hard. So, yeah, this was just it was great because they were so into the trailers and it also kind of helped them see what a good trailer is. Oh, okay. So when we do make iMovie trailers after this book, uh -huh. I think it was just a good piece too to show them. Kind of give them that exemplar mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. is, you know, how you really kind of showcase a book. Right, right. Yeah. So that was a good thing too. So that was a, I, I liked doing that this time of keeping it private and just something different for me. Yeah. And then we did an iMovie trailer last time. And so I 
had them. This is how I kind of had kids when we're watching their iMovie trailers to hold kids accountable to make sure that they actually are paying attention. And if they're walking away with something, mm -hmm. um, I find that Google Forms is a great way because this time they did the reading group's name and then did their movie make sense? Yes or no? Was there a cliffhanger? Just something that they do after they watch the trailer, they all have to fill it out. So it's kind of a, a peer evaluation mm -hmm. form? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so I, and I let the groups know, like, here's mm -hmm. what your peers said about you. Okay. They didn't notice the cliffhanger and you got that, you know, majority of the time. Uh huh. So I do like give them the feedback and right. let them know. And right. it's always glows and grows. It's not just always the bad. <laughs> I try to right. keep the good in there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. Literally the possibilities I have found are endless. Every time I get on here, I think or find something new. Yeah. Well, it's, it's amazing just, I mean, looking at your classes as you've got them set up here, the the wide variety of, uh, you know, items that you're making available for your students in here. And probably it's a whole lot easier to do it all in this one spot rather than, you know, kind of before Google Classroom, you had to, like, find it, mm -hmm. share it. Mm -hmm. They had to pull that one up, close it, pull up a different one. Here they can just kind of tap right. through on the screen and it's... It's just all in one place. I'm not getting 30 different pieces turned into me. I'm getting it all turned into one location. Right. right. Where I can pull it's it off. It's not all going into that shared with me or the nope. incoming yeah. folder in your yeah. Google Drive, right? Right. And I will say at first, the kids... This was hard. I mean, to get them to like learn how to open up an assignment, put it into Notability if it needed to be, mm -hmm. be able to turn it back into me. I mean, it definitely is a process. Right. But we have stuck with it. Yeah. And I can say now that my class there is, it's pretty seamless now. Okay. I can just say, here's your assignment. Go. And they and, and they now know to read the directions because that also is a huge oh. <laughs> learning curve too. Yeah. Yeah. So, Knowing to see what is it that Ms. Ola yeah. wants me to mm -hmm. do with this piece here. Besides watch the fun video. Right. Yeah. There's right. actually a learning thing. <laughs> yeah. There's actually something we have to do with yeah. it here. Yeah. 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 So if you were to, um, I guess, recommend... Um, some way for somebody to start in Google Classroom, what would you say for them? Like, just start. Just no, just I do did. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, my colleague across the hall just, I mean, I just said, just do it. Just one class, maybe, just like maybe your reading switch or maybe your math, just one class and just do find one assignment mm -hmm. and just try it. You know, get your kids, make sure, first of all, that they all can get logged on to Google. That right. is the most important thing yeah if not uh, you're gonna have a disaster on your hand a yeah. nightmare, I'm sure so just to make sure you test it out first and then just try one assignment mm -hmm. you know having them put in that code for that class you putting in a site create an assignment for them and then you know she just said it was amazing and it was easy and she can't believe she waited this long okay. to start it so I just feel like one small thing just to give it a try and then start adding to it a little bit by as little you bit. go and mm -hmm. as you kind of figure it out and as the students understand the flow, mm -hmm. you can start adding more to it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Adding more classes, adding more, yeah, I mean, more subjects. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's the best. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Kelly, yeah. for uh, sharing with us. And um, like I said, I'll, I'll post the uh, links to Kelly's, um, her Twitter and her blog and her classroom website. You can go take a look. Um, Hopefully they'll yeah. have some stuff up there that they can look at. Yeah, and I've, I was I share usually I try to twice a week at least put on some lesson plans that I'm doing on that techie teacher things um, that people are more than willing to look at and or they can even email me at kogle at cdaschools.org if you have any questions or need any I don't know just any advice I would be willing to share anything I've got. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you and. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the first ever episode of 271 Tech Speak. I don't know if we're going to keep that name or not, but we'll find something that works and, uh, and hopefully bring back some more uh, good strategies and things that you can use in the classroom that are being used and, and resources that we can uh, tap into for uh, getting technology into our classrooms. Awesome.